It's time for another O-Line Committee film session here. This is, this is uh, if you're new to this, by the way, welcome to the O-Line Committee. Watching NFL film with two former NFL offensive linemen. We're bringing fans behind the curtain here to break down what happens inside the trenches. Alex Boone, Jeremiah Searles. Gentlemen, happy week freaking one of the NFL season. We have I made it. Can't wait. We're here, We're here. Hey, by the way, you can tell because the text messages have totally changed that the conversations that Jeremiah and are in now. Hey, can we get a scouting report this week? It's it's yeah. not like, oh, this is love, man. This is Kush. I'm just chilling now. It's like, hey. Any chance you guys got a report on these couple guys? Like, yeah, dude, we're back at it. So it's super crazy and it's super fun because you're watching current film and trying to figure out what's going on right now and I how mean, do our guys win? Look at this. I mean, if just you just dude. I'm just I'm just up here just breaking down scouting report. I got Mozzie Smith, I got Osa, I got Neville Gilmore. I'm working oh. on Jonathan Hankins. Right, like that's just part of what my job is, right? right. Jonathan part of my Hankins, job. by the way, is a dude, great football name. Great 10. football name. That dude came dude. into the league with me. And my happy ass is on my second career. This dude's still out <laughs> there playing that? nose guard. Still out there. He didn't play a single snap of the preseason. So. Still doing it, though. Still doing it. Still yeah. doing it at a high level. But, yeah, I mean, last and then week one of college came out, so I got to watch. I probably watched on Monday and Tuesday. I'm not kidding, Mackie. I probably watched eight and a half hours of college tape. Easily, oh, dude. Just eating, eating, not even just kidding. eating raw hey, red meat dude, and watching college. Guy I, locked, guy I locked myself guy. in this. I locked myself in this room, and just by the end of it, just walked out, eyes bloodshot, hadn't eaten, just but nothing but film. Like if I closed my <laughs> eyes, hey. I could just see the back and the forth of like rewinding the film over and over oh, and over. They glaze again. quickly, dude. But oh, this is what I love great. about it. It's like when you talk about this is what we're doing right now. This is what an agent should be doing should be following you, watching you. What is wrong? That way when the team comes to me and they go, hey, we have an issue with this, you're like, yep, we've already addressed it. We're on it. We've talked about it for a couple of weeks. We're hoping he comes out of it now. And that's why this is so fun. And yeah, at times it's crazy because there's a couple of guys still in the gym that have workouts to go do, and all of a sudden we're coming back home. And even now breaking down film with the college kids, which is so fun because you're sitting there and you're talking to a kid and you're breaking down film, and it looks exactly like this. And you're like, hey, listen, you're just – you're setting too shallow. You need to get more depth on this, and this is what you need to see, and this is how you're seeing it, and you need to kind of revert back to this. And they're like, oh, yeah, I get it. It's like, dude, this is what it's all about, and this is why it's so fun. It's like football season is now about to go explode well, with film and craziness. I mean, it goes all the way back to, you know, kind of a look behind the picture of our recruiting pitch is, you know, 95 or 85% of what's going to get you drafted is what you do in between the white lines your senior season. Right. That's no, sure. that's no secret. That's the truth. Right? 15% is what you do in the pre draft process the senior bowl, the combine, the pro day, the interviews, all that stuff. So, what I like to do as an agency is like, how do I get you better in that 85%? Right. Like, how do I elevate that? Right. I'm going to be great in the 15%. Right. I'm going to crush that. But how do I help you with the bigger chunk of it? Right. And that's watching film, telling you what to look for, what scouts are looking at, challenging you. Right. We had our top recruit. Our top hey, recruit. I mean, the t hey, you'll see if we if we if can we get sign this, him whole. Baby. It is the top of top. The top recruit, and I send him a clip, and I go, "Scouts this hate this. Happen. You want to be OT one? Happen, you can't bro. do this. You can't do that." And he literally responds, "Going, I thought you might send me that." And I was like, "Yeah, dude. Like we're watching constantly. We're, we're and, nitpicking for them, so that and, when it comes to it, they are ready." And going all the way back to the guy we're about to break down, John Michael Schmitz. Yes, he selected us. He selected us as an agency before his season began. Like we didn't sign anything. Obviously, that's illegal. But you know, you can verbally commit whenever. And I watched tape with him every single week, and he improved throughout that year. And he told us at the end of the year, like that was really helpful, because as a coach, the coach is just like, yeah, you got your block. That's great. But the coach isn't looking at it from the NFL's perspective of like, is this player ready to play in the NFL from a technique standpoint, from a fundamental standpoint, from a mental standpoint? Like they view it from a completely different lens. And so we always talk to the kids and we bring a completely different perspective to their tape. Like, yeah, you blocked the shit out of this guy. That looks great. But your backside hand was not great and your inside foot didn't get enough ground. Right. That's the scouting report. How do we fix that? And so, that's what's been really beneficial. And, and so, to go off of that, not only that, but now that I, we see it, I know what I need to coach up in the gym to get them ready. Right. Like I've watched you for 12 games now, and all of a sudden I know that this hitch is there, or you're not throwing your hands at this point. Now I know what we instantly have to correct. So it's always a full circle thing. It ends up being, in, Mackie, I can't tell you. The blood is just flowing right now, man. Juices are raw. It's just so exciting. I know. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm talking right. crazy. <laughs> Let's get some tape. Let's well, get some tape. Right. into J Mac, dude. I love, dude, love him. John Michael Schmitz, all right, uh, uh, the Minnesota's finest uh, interior offensive lineman here. So, yeah, I, before we get to some of this film here, just like in 60 seconds or less, this is a, is a former uh, second round pick from this last draft. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's one of your guys. Both you guys right. have worked very closely with John Michael Schmitz. And just a week ago, uh, Dexter Lawrence was asked about, hey, new starting center. You've you've seen him in camp. You see him at practice. And he said, quote, he's got that dog in him. So he's already generating respect from veteran players in that Giants locker room. Um, before we roll a few of these uh, preseason clips from from John Michael Schmitz, just your your impressions of him going in as a rookie center in the NFL I mean, hey, if he's not ready, I blame you guys, quite frankly. I mean, you're for sure. Uh, you know. and, and honestly, that's one thing that, like, with Jay, I loved his personality right away. Like, he just seemed like such a vet minded guy. He takes criticism really well. He explains it back to you what he thinks he did wrong. And then he's like, Are we on the talking about the same thing? Like, yeah. But f- more for me, like, when you talk about that dog instinct, he was the guy in the gym this winter that was like, hey, if anything were to ever go crazy, you're the one that goes crazy. Okay. And he's like, <laughs> you know, he's got this like sideways smirk. He's like, yeah gotcha and i'm like dude it's if it's not you it'll be cvs but i need you and there was a time where the gym i mean you're talking about like six dudes in the gym and it's going crazy and it got a little sideways and j mike was quick to be like yo what's the problem it was no we're just playing we're just, we're just playing and it's just the way his presence the way he carries himself and the fact that he's so smart and he can apply things immediately is what's going to make him such a great center especially because when you're in the middle you're going to have to deal with a lot of people's problems. He's one of those guys that I feel like can just adapt to any situation that you throw him into. Yeah, that I mean, I echo everything that Alex said, but I also think the thing that makes him wise beyond his years is his maturity, right? Rookies a lot of times don't get on the field, not because they're not talented enough, but because of maturity level of understanding what it means to be a pro, how to prepare, how to go to practice every day, how to get better, how to take criticism, and not go in the toilet. Right, like all those things are stuff that he just shows in spades, and I think it's honestly why he's one of the tr- only starting centers that were drafted, that were the only center that was drafted this year that will start week one, right? And there was some guys. I mean, Steve Avila is going to start at guard in L.A. Joe Titman got drafted above him in New York. He's not going to start. Ricky Stromberg from Arkansas got drafted to Washington. He's not going to start. Drew Scruggs is starting in Houston only, but then he went on IR, right? Like so, I looked across the board and go. He's doing it right, man. Not many rookies can walk in there day one and start, and he's going to be a fantastic long-term player for them. I mean, you talk about what this old line is. You got Andrew Thomas, all-pro left tackle. Evan Neal, a first-round pick last year, who's going to take a big jump based off what I saw from his preseason tape. You got a rookie center, and then you've got uh, Bren Bradson, who's going to be the left guard, and then um, the old man, what's his name <coughs> on the right side? Glowinski. Glowinski. Right. Glowinski. He's been doing it forever. What a name. I That's another, another name. great That's an old line name. Yeah. Glowinski. The, Giant, the Giants O line is locked up for a long time with some really good talent. So I'm going to roll some. I just picked a few here. So what happens is if you're new to O line committee, uh, I'm coming at this from a fan media perspective. I present some things that look interesting from that perspective. And then two guys that actually know what they're looking at tell us what's happening here. So we're going to have our eye on, obviously, the center at number 61, John Michael Schmitz. These are just some preseason cutups, your boy. So I'll roll, I'll roll some of these, and you stop me as you, uh, as you want. Yep. Game two, Panthers. Look at that. The biggest thing that the the growth from John Michael, um, from the first pregame to the second pregame, is his hand placement. Like, yes. look right there. He's got he's got both hands inside. Right. He takes a good set. We've been talking a lot about not oversetting. He's inside out. He's got great hand placement, and he's controlling that defender, right? He's got the control. He goes to jump. And the thing I really love about Jay is if you watch this, the dude always shows up in the end zone cut. At always. The end, at the end of the play, right? If you let this run out after the catch, right, you'll see ball's gone. Here comes 61. Yeah, he's I, still fighting it, that guy, it cut right? off, but, he, but he's, right? he's yeah. still fighting that guy, right? And that's what Dexter Lawrence talked about, that dog. He don't care that he's done like ball's gone. He wants to physically assault Go you. back. Go the back, Matthew. Time. Not only that, but if you notice right here, that's the snap hand. 
They're, and look how close he is. And this is what I love about him, too, is the fact that he can get back and still get his hands inside. And that's one of the things that we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> Jay brought up, was that his hand placement from week one to week two was so much better, which allowed him to be more balanced in there. I mean, this guy's clearly trying him because he's a rookie. And at the same time, J. Mike's giving it right back to him. And that was our mm -hmm. biggest echo to him, was don't let anyone ever punk you out there. Like, you are the commander of your own line, and they need to see you be tough at all times. Here we go. Nice double wing set here. Uh, looks like Eden Prairie football. Take a knockdown here. And some of these might be, you know, there's, there's things that he doesn't Same do as thing. well, too. So there's 61, right? Keep an eye right this here. is something, again, this is all predicated off the fact that they're going to be a big outside zone team, especially to the weak side here, right? They're going to run a lot of that. So you just set it up, set it up, those linebackers bite. And then, man, I think Darren Waller's going to have a lot of catches this year over the middle. A the plays, ton the plays of catches. Just like this, right? It's not him here, but this is going to be the kind of bread and butter that Darren Waller's going to have this year. If you haven't drafted on fantasy yet, highly suggest you pick up Darren Waller. Now, listen, we're not always saying things are always rosy now. We were on his ass about this one. Like, listen, you can't be letting this guy get late, even though he's way out there. But this is one of those things where you talk about no one's really having to do a lot. And a lot of this is predicated off the fact that we've already run this 12 times and we yes. really handed the ball off. And look how easy, look how open he is right there. I mean, dude, you can't make this any better. And that's Darren Waller. Just give him a chance. That's why it's so exciting to watch this stuff. And to have a, a young center in there able to handle all this is super amazing. Let's keep it rolling here. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Oh, oh, two hands to your face. That's another thing. He, he, you're not going to move him. He is extremely stout, and that's what I love about him is he can anchor and sit, and at the same time, we talk about trying to redirect from there because that's what guys are eventually going to do. They're going to get you to stop your feet, and how do you redirect? That's a huge thing in the middle. Also, is this a twist? What is this supposed to be? Oh, you know how it is in preseason. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> The great thing here is the thing I love I about this is this is a veteran move. So watch John Michael here as he has his hand right at the end of the play, at the end right before the ball's gone, right? He's got his hands on him, and then as he goes to jump, he just gives him a little tug down. Nope. Right, right, right there. See his hand placement? Yep. He's like, oh, okay, he's oh. not rushing. He's not rushing. Just tug him down a little bit, right? Don't let him bat the ball. You can see it right here. He pulls him down right there at the end of the play. I've never seen that. Hey, by the way, either. I saw, you know why? Because the Kelsey brothers were talking about it. I'm surprised nobody ever knew this. It's about the, the glove the color of the gloves. Yes. Uh, like you always, like if you're playing an away team, you want to try and find the white whitest, gloves. Whitest gloves possible. Because it'll match their jersey. So you see less of your hand. And at the same time, if you can get a colored glove. Dude, they, we used to see, dude, I played with Randy. He used to get the old school cutters that came in with like, <laughs> they were incredible, dude. True leather on them. Like, but also, wait, look, so at this, look at this pocket, by the way. Beautiful. I mean, you talk about, look at Evan Neal's set over here, right? He's on the island. The slide's going away, and I talked about Evan Neal's going to be the one that has a big job. He's about to Tyson that dude, man. He's yeah, to, I mean, he's he, he, he's gonna, right tackle, right tackle, right tackle. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just drawing a little, oh, okay. oh, okay. uh, safe, right? little like, safety pocket. We were like, oh, yeah. But, like, he's he's the guy that if he can take a big jump this year, they have two championship tackles. Like, I'm sure. watching him at Alabama playing really well. You know, and his set has gotten so much cleaner. They talked about how he worked with his stance this offseason. Like, he's a guy that's going to take a big jump this year. Look how big. That's perfect inside out. Gets a little chip help and then just has him no chance, nowhere. Hey, on the pocket. gloves thing hey. for a second. Like, how hey. far how far can you take the gloves thing? Like, if you're the Eagles and you're, you know – yeah, can you just wear like red gloves if you're playing the Cardinals and they have red jerseys? Like, can you wear purple no, gloves if you're playing be, the Vikings? It has, it has to be black. team colored. It has to be <laughs> team colored. You just go black. Red dark. You're, you're wearing dark uh, you're wearing Bengals uh, camouflaged like, if you're uh, playing tiger a, gloves. If you were playing Philly and I was like with the Niners, I could wear black gloves. And in the moment, it's hard to see. You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't yes. want to draw attention to your hands. But at the same time, if you go back, did you see how easy all that's looking? And it's just set up. I mean, Darren Waller clearly one of the best in the league right now. But look how nice this pocket looks. Exactly like Jay said. As long as you can keep replicating this in the season, this will continue to build. That's, These guys are going to build that's confidence. Sterling, that's Sterling Shepard, by the way. Oh, is it my bad? But do you talk about the weapons that Daniel oh. Jones has compared to last year? Like I saw a tweet comparing them. Like it's an upgrade at every position. We here got we the go. uh, we got some of the twos in here. Uh, we got Tyrod <laughs> Tyrod Taylor. I like him as a backup in this system too. He's it's a great like, backup in this system. He oh, can yeah. come in. He can run a lot of the same mobile stuff, the bootlegs, and yep. and so here's uh, J. Mike is still in here with Tyrod Taylor now as the quarterback. Yep. Oh yeah, we we'll make that rookie work. Make that rookie work. Boom. Same thing. Get over. Get set. 
get to your spot and play ball. And that's one of the things that he does so well at. Look how fast he gets to his spot and throws his hands. And that's the whole key to this. No wasted movement, efficiently get there, set the angle, and we're done. The biggest thing, too, we, we harped on him. He had kind of an issue coming out of Minnesota of oversetting, right, of getting too far, right? And so he would always say, you see it here, he takes one initial set with that right foot, if you go all the way back to the front. He, was, he had a, an issue coming out of college of taking two kicks with this and getting nose-to-nose -nose with this defender, which then allows the defender to have a two-way go. He really worked on just doing a one-dot set is what we call it, right? One dot. Yep. You just, boom, you set to one dot. You leave that inside foot right there, and now you're inside out, and you make him have to go down the middle of you, and that's exactly what you want to do as a center because you strong, you sit, you anchor, which is one of his strengths. Then that way the pocket's not getting collapsed, which is – Part of what the issue with the Vikings is a lot of time is you see Garrett Bradbury getting pushed right here. That's why we were like, listen, if you're going to be a starting center in the NFL, you have to sit and really control the depth of that pocket. And that what, so what goes back to what we just talked about is un sitting, and then all of a sudden you have to be ready again for redirect because that's what guys are going to do. They're going to hit you with a bull rush because they know you can anchor, but if they know you can't do anything off of that, then they're going to hit you with the second move. And that's why with him, things got a little more advanced in the gym because he was so able to sit down and – squat down, throw his hands, and be ready to go. He's also – so he's 24 years old. He's a 24-year-old rookie, and you're seeing – because, like, I can never keep track during these pandemic years. No. You wind up with these, like, 30-year-old 30 year, 30 rookies. Of, you know, four, 14 years of eligibility burned. Disaster. You know, but there's a lot of more, like, Transfer older, mature times. guys coming in. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Twice in one season. <laughs> he's, Must have not really liked that coaching staff. Transfer boy. portal in week six. Uh, so <laughs> – all right, here's another one here. And the Giants, you know, a couple guys in the backfield here. You got a tight end, you know, a, little, a little heavy. What is this, 21 personnel here? Oh, dude, Giants? we call this – hey, we call Let's this double right. Back, yeah. Double right and even break football. You, when are you going to come up to practice, dude? You need to come learn with these guys. I know, I know. Give me a, give me like, give me like, a couple dates of when I can come okay. in. We're in New Prague this weekend, buddy. Go can time. I be the guy that goes and gets the tee after the kickoffs and brings it back to the sidelines? No, that's Coach Kyle. That's okay. his job. <laughs> that's Coach, Kyle. Coach Des stands with me, and we're the ones that yell at everybody. <laughs> Coach Pat's the motivator. Here we go. Look at that. Throw him down, you beefy bastard. This is, this is one of the hardest blocks. This is one of the hardest blocks in football. Snap hand. Snap hand. to get to his other shoulder here. Snap Woo! hand, wide reach on a, on a nose that's already out leveraged you. He Look takes a great that. first step, right? You have to lose ground to gain leverage. Right, the coaching point, you lose ground right there, gain leverage, but his backside hand is in this dude's chest, which is what allows him to, like so many times you see centers or even guards where this backside hand is on this guy's like seventy six, right? You'd see it on the six. Mm -hmm. But he worked so hard right about how to here. get that backside hand into his chest because if you can have that backside hand into his chest, you can start pushing north and south. <sighs> right. And now as soon as this guy tries to come off to make a tackle and just do an arm tackle, all his weight's going outside and you just push him up the field and get a pancake wow. and then just a little hop over because like initially from a from an idiot fan perspective you'd say well he's getting you know he's getting pushed back five yards here right would be like my first reaction watching this game three beers in but but this is as for the reasons you just said you have to go backwards to get leverage here because he's already on look at him i mean look at look at in terms of being out leveraged yeah. correct it's physically and impossible. you're snapping you, the ball with this hand exactly. here right if you try and step <laughs> forward here you're you're toast. You're toast. Yeah. You you have to lose ground, and it's a weird thing to do as an old lineman. You have to lose ground to gain leverage, and then you push north and south by getting your hips going up. Right. So it's the thing that would kill this play is if J. Mike was just skating this guy laterally, right? He would have made that play. Seventy six is right in the hole. Makes that play, but because of his backside hand placement and his ability to push north and south, that opens that hole right there, which then just pancake easy, easy, easy knockdown. It was actually one of the things that we worked about and worked in the gym today. And that's why I was late today. And I would totally pay that fine. But it was one of the things that I was talking to one of my guys about. And he was saying that his coach wanted him to run on a tightrope. And I was like, dude, it's not physically possible to have any power if I have nothing between my legs, right? Like I have to have something to drive off of. And the tighter I get with my feet, the less I have up top. And if anyone touches me, I'm going to fall. And then I started to put it together as to why he was always on the ground on zone. I'm like, why is he always falling? And it's because they don't have that power that J Mike does in his second step. It's all about the first two steps. That is by far the hardest block to make in the NFL, because if you don't make it, everybody on TV is saying what? Oh, the center couldn't get this yeah. reach. Like, like, like they know, right? Like, oh, it was a really easy thing to do. And it's like, actually, we left that guy on an island all by himself. And we told everybody else, hey, you can double up. But it's one of those things that if you can do that, you can go tag team somewhere else and beat the crap out of the three techniques or beat the, beat the crap out of the ends. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why it's so fun to have a young center like this that can do these things. Look at this, by the way. Is this, is this 
13, 13 personnel good. here, three tight ends. I got to call Dayball, dude. I got to get some plays from him. Like, dude, give me something. What are you doing over here? This is a rare chance for me to explain something football to the audience. And whenever you hear us refer to like a number of personnel, Alex is the one who taught me this last year as a 37-year-old watching football my whole life. It's about time uh, you guys start learning something. The first number is the number of running backs. The second number is the number of tight ends. And then the wide receivers are what's remaining subtracted from five. So cool. this Correct. would be one th- tw- 13 personnel would be one running back or a fullback. Uh, and then three tight ends. And then so there's one number remaining. That means there's one wide receiver. My guess is, is he probably on the strong side? On the other side? Probably, weak, split probably out. on the weak side. On the weak side? Split out weak. Because you, remember, you're probably going to get a good chance. You might get a little one-on-on over there. And, somebody you, might and fall you see asleep. that they're on the they're on the hash. So you wouldn't put you wouldn't yeah, put all that field, side yeah. to the short side. You want to spread out the other side. Let's see this, baby. Duo. Get there. There you go. There's that dog, right? That's that's yeah. what he's talking about, right? right so right, he, right. they're running a duo play here, right? So we'll, we'll walk you through the blocking scheme here, Mackie. It's going to be an, uh, a, a, technically, between the a, center. A, a. Let's say ace because it's play side. Let's yeah, just call it an ace. It's going to be an ace for the center and the right guard to 53, right? So 76, pause it right there. 76, 76, or the center and the right guard are doubling 76 to 53, right? That's called, This is called an ace. Mm-hmm. Then you have what's called a tray over here with the right tackle and the tight end to 54. Your other right. Oh, sorry. Get it. Get yep. it. Okay, it so we're going to so, okay, so That's the tray. To, that's the tray. That's the tray. And that's, that's the ace. And if it were a guard tackle, it would be a guess. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Deuce, bro. What? A deuce? Deuce. Yeah. Why is it a deuce tray? Ace, ace deuce, deuce tray. tray. Right? <laughs> So then you have man on the backside here, money, money blocks on money, the backside. That's where you here. make your money, baby. And then the tight ends over here are quadding, quadding 91 to 20. Because quad is four, right? So the great thing, this is called duo, right? The duo. And you want to get as many double teams. It's basically power without a puller, right? Duo is power without a puller. It's the new power. That's what yeah. everyone's running now. BA kind of made it really famous. He loved it. The problem here is 73 doesn't see the run through. So seventy three is supposed to is supposed to he knock turns on, out too knock much. on ninety six's door and then hit. He's 54. supposed to do exactly what J Mike's see, doing. See how J Mike's square, and this is what I want to talk about is when you can have a Boom. young player that understands Boom. that he needs to be square and he needs to make a huge step to his right, hit this guy, but still hold presence for fifty three if he runs through the backside just like that. Like it's extremely hard to do that, and you see that with the tackle, he can't do it, and he almost has it a little bit easier. Like, dude, you really are just kind of going through gaps. But that's what we love about Jay. And then also that the finish at the end of this. Like this is one of those, if we're gonna cram it in here, we're gotta we gotta be a dog. Like we just threaten them. Look at him, he's over <laughs> he's just stalking, right, love him, him. stalking him outside the logo. Dude, CV's gonna get so mad. We haven't done one about him yet. We'll do one. <laughs> he, has, he didn't play in the preseason, not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> Bengals. <laughs> Would have loved All to right. have seen him. Third down look here. You have an overload. So they're going to go slide to the left here. I guarantee you they run some type of stunt. Oh, look at that. His left Shut guard here picture. screws him. And I'm not trying to throw no, him and under the bus. No, we're not. We'll, we'll explain why. Do you want me to do it? Well, so here's the idea. Tough, you, love, when, tough when you, love for the left when, guard here. When you have an overload front like this, your antenna goes up immediately to Way what, up. What, Alex? Oh, games, twists, games, everything, twists. everything. The whole reason you line up like this is to try and get three individual blocks on the left side of the line here and then run some type of games to get them on different levels. The way to combat this, all three guys on the left side have to set vertically off the ball and get on the same level, right? And so the tackle's got to get back, Straight the guard's got to get yes. back, and the center's got to get back, right? So the tackle and the center do a nice job of getting back here, but Azudu here, the 75, he flat sets this which then immediately puts him and J. Mike on separate levels, which then makes it impossible to pass this stun off, right? So let it play out a little bit. You because, listen. Both guys get back, right? Mm. See how flat Azudu is? He's so flat. You see his first step? Watch Azudu's left foot. See how it goes it, laterally? It doesn't even go back. It almost touches the same spot it, that it goes, starts so in. So right there? And it goes forward. See that? He's got right. an up kick. That means immediately... You can see the left tackles behind the line, the centers behind the line, but Azudu didn't get back at all, which makes this almost impossible to block off. And J Mike does a great job of not passing something to air. 
He right. thinks about it. You can tell. Watch, because right. he just kind of snaps and he's like, should I? But we told him, and I told him after the fact, it was this very vet move to stay on the penetrator because there's a good chance the quarterback can get away from the looper or here we'll run the running back through the A-gap just in case this happens, right? But you have to stay on the penetrator. And that quick split moment where you see him push him and he kind of like, should I? We, I was glad that he stayed with him because it opens up this little pocket here for you can, him to stay. You can see right here out of his right eye, he's like, I see 97 coming across. I know that's our guy in D-tackle, right? But I can't just pass this guy to air. Because he, right? he sees his buddy he sees here. There, he's already, he sees 97 yeah. looping across his face. He's like, man, I can't pass this guy to no one. Right? So it's, in theory, don't, don't guard, pass guard is back one. here. Guard yeah. is back here. Collecting. And then he, he passes off to guard and picks up 97 yeah, coming correct. around. But, on the and then the running back's still a bonus. And 20 does a great job saving a life here. For sure. Great job <laughs> saving a life. Boom. Just wear that and just allow your quarterback to escape. Right? Because if you don't, if, if that running back's not there, 97's coming right up the pipe for an easy sack. Yeah. And again, it's we nice to have a mobile quarterback this here, is, too. This can, is nice where Ty Tyrod Taylor can make things happen. Right, you can make things happen. You can get outside, and then easy first down, out of bounds. Beautiful. Here we go. I got one more for you here. I love Ooh. it. I love these dead ball snaps too. <laughs> this is a. This is a. I think this winds up being a touchdown on a. I. You'll. You'll see it here. Yeah, we have seen it. We've. We've watched. He's it. probably broken down all these a hundred times. We have. <laughs> he just floats this, it up there. Gets this, smoked. <laughs> this is the running back. The running back here needs Take to it back. Tyrod Taylor a. Nice bouquet of flowers. Hey, where's right. Zenner when I need him? Oh, dude. So, yeah, Zach Zenner, he won't recruit a running back that can't pass protect. Right? So, they're sliding right here. Ah, throw in, it. In an ideal world, <laughs> in an ideal world here, we I know we don't have the wide copy. The quarterback redirects you back to 53. Right? Jay tries to, though, by going right. back. But this is a great job where Jay Mike sets initially to 54. His linebacker is ID to 54. 54 comes back across. He follows the linebacker, right? He doesn't just keep sliding out to nowhere. If he can here, ideally, you'd like to try and get the left guard to try and get back off this. But right, the left guard knows he's locked man on 92. Running back, you got to step up in the A gap here. Stay inside out. Strike right. He's oh. backing up and lunging. Oh, this is this. And is, this to is be bad. fair, there's not a lot that the O line can do here, right? Like, if yeah. anything, a really, really savvy crew right now, Jay, like. In a year from now, I would expect Jay to maybe be able to pick something like that up if he's if he's playing next to someone that he knows. But that's one hundred percent on the running back, and I want everyone to see that all these sacks ain't always on us. Like this is this happens all the time, and that's when we turn around and we're like, dude, really? He's not even that good of a rusher. It's like the, they don't the even worst rush part. Him. The worst part is like watch the way he turns around and watches him. We're like twenty right here, twenty's like, oh, okay, and then he's just like, oh no, ah, he, he, he hops. He hops here a little bit, yeah. Throw it, oh god! And then, and then he better go help him up. This is a t- look at this. Let me this see. Let me see. Let me see. Does he help him up? Oh, hey, roll it here. Hold this on. is one of those things that we always look. Did you help? It's okay. You mess up. Did I don't you think help we see it. Up? I don't think we. No, see he it. doesn't. He turns and runs. Oh, dude, I turn. I turn and run too. <laughs> Great ball, though. I think because yeah, you know, no. Hey, the funny thing is, nobody would talk about this on the sideline. This would just be one of those things they bring up tomorrow, and I, when everyone sees it, we'd all be like, "Oh, that's right, you did get sacked on this play." <laughs> yeah. And I will say this: I think Jalen Hyatt is a great deep threat. Take the top off the defense pickup for them. They drafted him in the third round. I think he's going to be a big, big time threat for them as well. He's going to have some really nice long catches this year. Tell me you're a Giants fan without telling me you're a Giants fan, dude. I think I'm just Giants, saying. I'm, I'm just saying. You, I'm just I think saying. the Giants. The Giants have a legit shot to challenge Philly this year. I believe it. I really do. You know, I've been. I don't know. I've just like the Giants. I've never. You know, we, we did the. We did a film breakdown of Dable's defense. It was like one of the first things we did when we launched this thing in April or May. And I think I was the only one on the show that said, I don't think Daniel Jones is a top 10. You guys had said he's kind of like a fringe top 10 quarterback. Yeah, and I, I was like, like I don't know. Lot. In this system, so I, I you know, I, I probably watched like 20 or 25 plays and just picked some of these out. The, the system is so brilliant because almost every play is some sort of misdirection off of a run. Like the passing plays... There's so many bootlegs where he's just not under pressure. Exactly. Go go hit a crossing route. You know who somewhere. it's like? like kind of like Frisco. No, right? it's like, it is. It's just it's, like- but no, in the concept of like everything's going to be predicated off of misdirection and wildness, and you're kind of like playing a lot of games at once, and you're like, dude, are they throwing it? Are they running it? I'm yeah. not saying that they they run the same scheme and all that because it's not at all. They their offense is completely awesome, but it's the whole when you get up there as a defender. 
holy shit, what are they doing? Like, what are we doing? What are we playing? Where are we? And if if you're not gap sound against a team like that, they will take the top off of you quickly because there is so much going on. It's going to be very similar to what Josh Allen was early in his career, right? Because it's Buffalo, right? What they do to get Josh more comfortable, they got him on the move. They got him able to create, gave him options to run with his legs. Like, the great thing, though, is what Dable has in New York that he didn't have in Buffalo is Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Right. You have an elite running back and an elite chance to get a running game going. So you don't have to have him back there throwing it 40 times a game like Josh had to do. Or in the fear of him running. That's that's why I think that's why I think the Giants offense is actually going to be better than Buffalo's this year. Wow. Ooh. Bull take, bull he also, take. yeah, he, he also has, like we, weird drama between quarterback and star receiver that's been lingering. It's yeah, that, I don't feel like that could ever happen there. Feels weird in Buffalo, which is a different that's, conversation. Uh, yeah. I'm not getting in that's that it. one. I got you. That's it. That's J. Mike in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. Going for the all rookie team, baby. Let's go. Hell yeah, there it is, man. Yep. Uh, and uh, row the boat, Sky Imago Gophers. Uh, one of the we'll great uh, later. Recent. Yeah. What. Offensive lineman drafted here. Do we have to get into that later? Are we going to talk about how they kept running it up the middle for no gain? Are we going to um, continue talking about how they well, did the same thing? Oh, and then all of a sudden kicked the field goal and everybody's like, all right. We'll get into it. I'll I mean, you're going to feel talking. terrible being the other team that couldn't even defend that. <laughs> and now you're about to go play Colorado. The end like, of the <laughs> podcast. They're, right. they're bringing me up. End click, it. The, click the like button and the subscribe button if you like these film breakdowns oh, on the O-line funny. committee.